I'm Deborah Johnson. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me again today. If you're new to my channel, welcome. On this channel, I share different things from spiritual encouragement, godly relationship advice, and teachings with the aim of helping you to live a life of surrender unto the Lord. If you enjoy this video, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel, like, and share with someone else so that they can also be blessed. And also leave me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. So this video is about relationships, and um, for those who may not know, I shared some time ago um, my testimony of how God showed me who my husband is. And ever since then, I've gotten a lot of emails, a lot of inboxes, and just a lot of questions that people have um, about this process, because other people do go through similar things, and they just want to know, you know, how to handle it, what they should do. So there are some questions that I get often that are very common. So this video is about five frequently asked questions about God telling me who you, um, who my husband is. Alrighty. So um, if you haven't already, I do encourage you to go back to my other videos. Um, I have a playlist for relationships, and go on, go ahead and listen to those, watch those, so that you you know you know my story and you know where some of these questions are coming from. And also on my blog, which the link is down below, you'll get more um, more information and some blog posts about relationships and frequently asked questions and some things that I experienced that could help you in your process. So these are just five of some of the frequently asked questions that I get. So I'm just going to read them and um, give my response to these um, common questions. And then I'm also going to share some tips at the end, just three um, brief tips or some words of advice. Alrighty, so the first one is what to do when you messed up and told the person, right? I get this question a lot. Um, what do you do when, you know, God showed you who your spouse is or you believe you think God showed you and then you go ahead and you tell the person and you realize that you messed up? Like, what do you do in this situation? So the first thing that you need to do is you need to repent. Um, ask God to forgive you for moving ahead of him, right? Because you moved when God didn't tell you to move. You did something when God didn't tell you to do it. So you need to go ahead and ask God to forgive you. And then also ask God to still work out everything, to work out the situation according to his will. Because if this is truly something that God is doing, he has a will for it. He has a purpose and he has a timing for everything for you and the other person, right? Um, even if you're a guy, maybe God told you who your wife is, but he didn't tell you to go and tell her just yet, right? And you ran ahead of him and you went and told, told her and now... You know, things are probably not going <laughs> too well because of what you did. You know, just repent and ask God to still work things out even though, you know, you moved ahead of him. And also ask God to fix any issues that it may have caused. Um, ask him to fix any issues that it may have caused. I believe that God can work anything out. And also learn from the mistake. You know, don't do it again. It's never wise to move ahead of God. Um, I know sometimes we can be anxious. We can be scared. We can think. Well, let me just tell this person and see what they say, not realizing that it may um, hinder or prevent some things. But I believe that God is, he knows that we're going to make a mistake, right? He's greater than our mistakes. He, you know, he sees in advance. And I, I believe that God is able to still work things out, um, even if you did that, right? Just don't do it again, right? Do not move ahead of God. If God did not say to move, don't move. And the second question is, how to know for sure it's God, <laughs> Um, how to know for sure is God. I, this is probably my number one question. Like, how do I know for sure it's God? And speaking from the woman's perspective, right? Um, you're going to know for sure it's God when it happens. There's really no other way to know for sure, um, to know for sure, for sure, except when it happens. When it happens, that is going to be your final confirmation. I shared in my testimony that my final confirmation that this was God was when it happened and even after we got engaged even after we got together we still have people you know prophesying and speaking words from God and saying you know God put you guys together even after we got married people were still giving us words from the Lord saying that you know this was a marriage that was ordained by God so when it happens you'll know that this is um that this is something that God has done now assurance prior to that will come from the spirit of God assurance prior to that will come from the spirit of God. Um, there's no secret formula to knowing if someone is your God ordained spouse or not. There's no secret form form formula, excuse me, to knowing if, you know, what you, to knowing if what you believe you receive from God is actually from God. 
Um, God simply reveals things to us through his Holy Spirit. And the same way that God would speak to you about something else or anything is how he would speak to you about a spouse. So the question that I have for you is, do you have a relationship, a relationship with God enough to know his voice and to know his leading? Do you have a relationship with God enough to know his voice and his leading? Because when you walk with the Lord, when you have history with him, when you spend time with him, when you get to know him, um, you're able to discern the voice of God. You're able to discern the leading of God. You're able to discern what is of God and what is not. Not to say that you'll get it right every time. And sometimes you may have to step back and test the spirit. We should always test the spirit. Sometimes you may have to step back and ask God to confirm or to make things clear. But when you walk with him, you will know his voice. And um, just real quick, I encourage you to go ahead and listen to one of my videos that I did um, last year called How to Test the Spirit. This will kind of help you um, help you in discerning the voice of God, right? So back to what I was saying, do you have a relationship with God enough to know his voice or to know his leading? Because oftentimes when it comes to this topic of knowing who your spouse is in advance, Many people want to just jump and know who their spouse is. They, you know, they say, well, God showed me this, God showed me that. They just got saved. God hasn't shown them about their attitude. God hasn't shown them to let go of certain things. God hasn't told them to consecrate. God hasn't told them to fast. God hasn't told them to read their word like they should. God hasn't, hasn't told them to, you know, to, to live for him. They, they can't hear God about nothing else that God would tell them. But all of a sudden they hear God about a spouse. So if this is you where... The Lord can't even tell you to stop gossiping because you won't listen to him. But all of a sudden, he's told you that this man is your husband or this woman is your wife. You might want to step back because that's most likely your flesh. OK, I know it may be hard to hear, but it's most likely your flesh because the first God's and I always say this God's main priority for you is salvation, is the salvation of your soul. His main priority for you is to conform you into the image of his son, not to give you a spouse first. Even though that's important and God wants to, to put together kingdom marriages and he is doing that. He will continue to do that until the Lord returns, right? But first, he wants to conform you and make you into the image of his son. And that's not to say that you have to be perfect or you're going to be super duper duper, you know, spiritually mature before you get married. But if you have not heard God concerning the elementary things of Christian living, if you have not heard God concerning basic ABCs of how to be a believer and just giving up the old life and dying to your flesh and, you know, loving people like you ought to love them, forgiving people. If God can't talk to you about those simple things, I highly doubt he's talking to you about a spouse. I highly doubt he's talking to you about a spouse. He will talk to you about that, you know, one day eventually. But if your heart is not even open to receive the basic fundamentals of the word of God, why would God speak to you about a husband? Why would he speak to you about a wife, right? So let's put things into perspective. Let's not put the cart before the horse. God has an order for how he does things. He's a God of decency and order. And he's not going to hand you to a man or bring a woman to you when you have not learned to make him your Lord, your master, right? Your husband, the lover of your soul. Okay. So when you walk with God and you have a relationship with him and you get to know him and you have history with him and you, you know the leading of God concerning this, that, and the other, and you, you just have that fellowship with the Lord, when he begins to talk to you about a husband, even though you know, it may be difficult to receive and you may be unsure because it's, you know, it's crazy to, for God to, it's not, it's not crazy, but it's, it's somewhat scary, right? When God tells you this because it's like, oh my gosh, what if I'm wrong? But because you walk with him, the Lord will begin to assure you by way of his Holy Spirit. That's what he did with me and others who have the same testimony. The Lord will assure you. He'll send confirmation. He'll make things clear. And you will know because you know his voice. You know his leading, whether it's God or not. And it may take time. It may take time to properly discern this, but you will know because he does not want to hide anything from you. And the Bible says that my sheep know my voice and the strangers they will not follow. Um, you can be his sheep. And still not learned in knowing his voice because you're not really trying to hear his voice, right? About the things that you should be hearing his voice about. You want to hear his voice about things that please your flesh. Um, so, you know, I encourage you to have that relationship with God and over time he will make things clear. And sometimes it's not even that God doesn't want to make things clear. It's that your heart is so... Your heart is so unsettled that you cannot even receive, right? Because I know people who have reached out to me 
And even in my own life with other things that, you know, we're seeking God about something, God is this you, is this not? And because our heart is so unsettled about it, our heart is so like we're wrestling, we're, we're tussling with it. That when God wants to say yay or nay, it's hard to receive because we're afraid of the answer. We're afraid of, you know, the unknown. So settle your heart. Be at peace. If you have to go on a fast, if you have to just shut everything down to really hear from God, settle your heart and, and receive from the Lord. So it, it's a process. There's no, like I shared, there's no formula to knowing. Um, you just have to know the voice of God for yourself. You have to know the leading of God for yourself. God knows how he speaks to you and he knows how to make things clear to you. So the third question that I get asked often is, what if the person has character flaws? What if the person has character flaws? Okay, so there's, I'm going to answer this in two parts, minor issues, minor character flaws, and like major things. So when it comes to minor things, like, okay, he's um, not disciplined, or this person isn't too disciplined, they have some pride, you know, there's just some things that, that you see that you don't really like. Um, no one is going to be perfect, right? The person is still maturing just as you're still maturing. Um, so pray for them and um, pray with them concerning, well, with them if you're able to, but pray for them concerning the things that God has shown you. Um, in my own personal journey, when I, when I went through that process, God showed me things in my um, now husband. He showed me things in him like pride and other things like that that weren't very good. Um, he showed me some, you know, fleshly things and I had to pray and trust God with it thankfully he took us through he he gave us time to mature he gave us time to get more free and delivered from certain things but I had to trust God with it and I had to pray that and and believe that you know when this thing happens when God brings it we're both going to be ready right for this next stage and I literally saw God mature him over time I saw God mature my husband Devon over time and even after we got engaged that process of being engaged I saw God mature him and me like that whole time of me knowing us getting engaged so when we got married like God has matured us even after we matured a lot so there's a scripture that says in Philippians that he who began a good work in you is able to bring it to completion we're all a work in progress right none of us are perfect none of us are the total package none of us have it all together we're all a work in progress. So when you see things, when you see minor character flaws, when you see things that maybe he can grow more in the fruit of the spirit, pray. Or she can grow more in the fruit of the spirit. Pray for that person. Don't just, well, I'm just going to th throw them away. You're not perfect. <laughs> you don't have everything together. You're not a total package. Um, and God is still maturing you even after you get married, even after you have kids and all these things. God is still maturing and perfecting the work that he began in you. Um, so don't throw it away or, you know, discard the person because you see things that you don't like. Um, now, when it comes to minor, um, major things, right? Um, someone asked me recently in one of, um, through an email and also they commented in one of my videos, they said, you know, I think this person has like a narcissistic spirit. You know, they're very controlling, very domineering. This person has a narcissistic spirit. Now, when we talk about things like narcissism, that is very um, similar, if not the same, to a Jezebel spirit. And that is a major issue that they need deliverance from before they marry or get into a relationship with anyone. Because that spirit will literally drive you crazy. Okay? That spirit will literally drive you crazy. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can. that thing will cause you to just be completely frustrated and lose your mind. Even with the Holy Spirit, you need God to walk you through someone with um, through that. And if the person is not willing to change or to get delivered you're going to be out of gas. If that person is not willing to, you know, give that issue over to God and allow God to set them free, that relationship is going to continue to be hindered. So one of the gifts that God has given us is the gift of discerning of spirits. Um, never ignore what God has allowed you to discern. Never ignore what God has allowed you to discern. Never rely fully on a dream or a vision while ignoring fruits. I'm going to repeat that again. Never rely fully on a dream or vision while ignoring fruits. Um, sometimes we can, especially when it comes to this topic of marriage, especially when it comes to women and men too, men can be gullible as well. Um, sometimes when we desire or we're so desperate for marriage, we can ignore all the red flags. 
God can literally be showing this red flag after red flag after red flag and we just ignore it because we want this person so much or we want this thing so much and we end up having false dreams, false visions, false confirmations, even things happening in the physical realm, like false things taking place because we desire this thing so much. And guess what? The enemy wants to give us our desires that contradict God because he's come to kill, steal, and destroy. So he knows that if we get this thing outside of God, if we get this thing that God is not giving us, if we come into a covenant with this person that God has not given us, it's going to kill, steal, and destroy us. So he's going to give us false confirmations. So do not rely so much on dreams and visions while ignoring the fruit that you see on this person's tree. And again, I want you to go back and um, watch that video, How to Test the Spirit. Also, looking at someone's fruit is also a way that God speaks to us. Because some of you are asking God, show me if this person is my husband, you know, you know, send me confirmation and their fruit on their tree is one of the ways that God is showing you this person is number one, he's not ready. He or she is not ready. He or she is not saved. He or she doesn't want anything to do with me. He or she is in church just looking for whatever they want. They're not really filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, God is showing you all these things through their life, through their character, through their behavior. Even people's other people's testimony of them bears witness to the bad fruit on their tree. It bears witness and yet you continue to ignore it. So do not ignore your gift of discernment. Your gift of discerning of spirits, do not ignore it. If God has shown you something, I'm telling you, believe it. And if, if he's showing you, he's telling you, and it's a red flag, and he's telling you, no, this is not the one, believe it and move on. You are wasting your time, and it's going to end up being a major heartache. There are some people who have believed falsely that someone, somebody was their spouse. They ignored all the red flags. They married the person. Some of them got divorced, some of them are still married and they're miserable. And some of them are pretending like God put it together. Even after the misery, they're still pretending like God put it together and he didn't. And then some of them, they believe that this person is the one and then something happens and they find out that it's not. And now they're, you know, they're devastated and they're asking God why. And now they're straying away from the Lord. I'm telling you, do not ignore the red flags. If God is showing you that this person is not the one, let them go let them go so um i hope that answers that question right we have minor issues you know it, it, it may not necessarily be minor but these are things that god is, can work on and then you have major things like red flags where god is telling you no like this person is not the one so the fourth one is what if a guy or girl um says that god told him that i'm his wife but god never told me I've gotten this question a few times and I, 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 I think it was important to put it in this video because um, people do experience this, right? Where someone comes up to you, they say, hey, God told me that you're my spouse, but God never told you. And then some guys are so bold that they're like, well, if God told me, then you need to just go ahead and go with it and don't be disobedient to God and so on and so forth. And, you know, they're trying to coerce you and they're trying to manipulate you with the name of God to get you to submit to their will do not do it sis like don't do it tell them no and as a guy as well if god has not told you that do not move with it don't date the person to see if you know let me see what god says no go into prayer go into prayer and hear from god yourself don't try to test out the waters and see what's going to happen um so never move without direction and instruction from the lord Never move without direction and instruction from the Lord and never make such a big decision um, based off of what someone else says God told them. Marriage is a major life decision. Who you marry can make or break your life. Who you marry can literally change the trajectory of your life for good or for evil. Many people marry an enemy, <laughs> an enemy of God and an enemy of them. Many people marry somebody who when they were dating, they were sweet, they were kind, they did all these things. But once they got married, the mask was removed. So never make such a major life decision as marriage without getting a word from the Lord, without getting instruction, without getting peace from God. Even if you don't have, because I don't believe everyone may not get a, a, a word in the, in the same way that some of us do, but you should have peace. You should still pray about it, right? You should always pray and say, God, do you want me to marry this person? Give me peace. Give me, you know, confirmation. Show me. You should never just, just go with it without consulting God. As believers, we pray. We are praying people, right? 
we pray and we consult God about the things that we do with our life. We don't just take our life at the reins and, you know, tell God to follow us. No, we follow him. And then next I want to add, um, when you think about the story of Mary and Joseph, right, in, um, in the Gospels, when Mary was pregnant with Jesus Christ and God sent the angel to tell her, um, she told Joseph, Joseph wanted to put her away because she was pregnant outside of wedlock, right? Joseph, being wise, he did not just go off of what Mary said God said. It would have been crazy, honestly, for him to just go off of that if God didn't tell him himself. This is a pregnant woman in a time where, you know, it was taboo to be pregnant before marriage. And in a time where this type of situation where someone is pregnant by the Holy Spirit, I'm sure he thought she was crazy. So for him to have just moved off of what she said God said um, about a major life decision as marriage would not have been wise. However, God in his wisdom... God in his wisdom, God himself went to Joseph and confirmed the word with him. And I believe that with godly marriages, with marriage, the word must be confirmed to the both of you. The both of you have to have a word from the Lord. It can't just be, well, God told him I'm his wife, so I'm just going to go ahead and follow what he said. Or God told her, so I'm just going to go ahead and follow what she said. No, you both need confirmation from the Lord. And God is well able to show you and to make it clear to the both of you. So if someone has approached you and said, God said, you're my wife. You need to go back and check with the Lord because some people are not hearing from God. They're hearing from a familiar spirit. Some people are not hearing from God. They're hearing from their desires, their flesh. They see everyone else getting married and they want to come marry you, right? They see, you know, their friends marrying girls that look a certain way and they see that you look a certain way and they want to look cool with their friends and they want their friends to think that their spouse is beautiful. So they go and pick someone that matches who them and all their other friends like so that they can be cool. Like people do things like this. Make sure that you have a word from the Lord. You don't want to be somebody's trophy wife or trophy husband just because they see they like how you look and they got a word from their own flesh that they think is from God that you're their spouse. You don't want to base your life off of somebody else's word from God. You never want to do that. You never want to do that. And if you move off of what the, the other person, what he said, God said, you will eventually become bitter when things go south. Because things will, if God didn't put this together, trust me, it's going to go south. And you may have to, you know, God, God can possibly work it out. The both of you repent and seek him and allow him to, um, to rebuild it on a good foundation. But oftentimes if God didn't put, put it together, it's not going to last. It's going to go south. Even if you stay in the marriage, it may be a, a bad marriage. Um, so you do not want to move unless the Lord told you because when things go south, you're going to end up bitter. Um, with my personal testimony, one thing that I can, that my husband and I can testify about is that because God showed the both of us, right? When the storms of life came, which they did, even as soon as we got married, we, we, God took us right to a storm. Like literally he was like, all right, y'all ready? Let's go. And because we had a word from God, because we have full assurance, full confidence that God put us together, even when the winds and the waves came, even when the storm came, we stood. It wasn't like, okay, I'm going to leave you. Even though, let me tell you, we went through some things that it was like, Lord, you're going to go through those times where you're going to almost wish like I hadn't gotten married so soon or, you know, maybe I should have just waited or maybe I shouldn't have done it at all because marriage is hard work. Even when God put you together, maybe one day I'll, I'll um, share a message on this. That even when God ordained you, you're still going to have to go through trials. You're still going to have to go through storms. Just because God put you together does not mean everything is going to be perfect. You're going to bump heads. You're going to disagree. They're going to get on your nerves. You know, people are going to come and try you. People are going to come and try your marriage. The enemy is going to come and try your marriage. When those storms come, you need to be able to stand on the word of the Lord that he put you together and you didn't put yourself together. Because if you put yourself together, you can separate yourself easily. But the word of God says that um, when God puts a couple together, that let no man put it asunder. What God has joined together, let no man put it asunder, including yourself. Including yourself. So you need to know that God put you together. You absolutely need to know that God put you together. Do not move off of someone else's word. Whether you're a guy or your girl, do not. Even if you're dating and they said, oh, God showed you, God showed you that, you know, I'm your wife or you're my husband, whatever. Okay, babe, I'm going to go and pray. 
I'm going to go and talk to the Lord. And to be honest, y'all should have asked God before you started dating. But hey, that's that's my view. Um, but yeah, so seek the Lord. Um, seek the Lord. So when you have a word, there will be no doubts. Um, even after you get married and the storms come and you will be able to stand on that firm foundation. If you think that God has shown you someone is your spouse, especially for the guys, and they say, you know what, God hasn't shown me that, don't harass the person. Like that's not that's not right. Don't harass them. Don't, you know, go around telling other people to try to get people to convince them. Don't try to mark your territory by telling other people not to talk to them. Like, do not harass them. Be an honorable man of God. Be an honorable woman of God. Even as women, don't go telling other women to mark your territory. Be honorable and trust the Lord. Trust the work of the Lord instead of the work of your hands because what you're doing is actually manipulation. Do not harass them. Do not bother them. Let the Lord speak to them. Mary trusted God. Mary, the mother of Jesus, trusted God because she believed, she believed what God told her. And if God was able to come to her and to tell her that this child was from the Lord, then surely the same God was able to go to Joseph and tell him. And I believe that God can do the same for you. And if God doesn't go and tell the person, let it go. Everybody's story is different, but trust the Lord. And if God, if you prayed and God showed you this person isn't your spouse, let it go. Let them know kindly, like don't be rude about it. Don't be, you know, nasty about it. Just let them know, hey, you know, this isn't, God didn't show me this. And also pray for them. So the last question that I get often is, what if God also tells my spiritual leaders or others that this person is my spouse, but God still has not told me yet, right? So what if God, you know, what if your spiritual leaders come to you and say, hey, God, show me that this person is your spouse? Or what if somebody else comes to you and says, hey, God, told me this person is your spouse, but God doesn't tell you? So that happens often. Um, I've heard of it happening and I've seen it happen. So it's similar to the last situation. Do not move off of what other people say that God told them. Do not move off of other people's word from God about who you're going to marry. When it comes to marriage, that is a serious life decision. Do not just, you know, don't, don't ask someone else. Unless you're seeking them for counsel or advice or even to pray. Like, do not rely on what someone else says. Make sure the Lord has told you. You need to have peace and a word from the Lord for yourself. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes spiritual leaders can be wrong. Sometimes they can be wrong. Sometimes spiritual leaders can see things through the flesh and think that it's God when it's not. They are man just like you and me, right? They're not some super God, some superhumans. Sometimes they can be wrong. And spiritual leaders can have ulterior motives for why they think that, unfortunately, right? There are some um, spiritual leaders that are bad shepherds. They are false shepherds. God didn't send them. Or maybe they started off right and, you know, they veer off into moving in their flesh. And sometimes they can have ulterior motives for wanting to pair you with someone. Maybe this person is their spiritual son or their spiritual daughter and they think you'd be a great match. Or maybe they don't want you to leave the church. <laughs> so they're like, hey, marry this person who's in covenant with our church so that you can stay here. Like people can have ulterior motives. So you need to make sure that you have a word from God. Don't feel pressured. Um, to, 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 to give into what they're saying. Don't feel pressure to date this person or give this person a chance. Pray and have peace from the Lord, right? If you decide to date them or whatever, make sure you have peace, peace from God. And also don't allow them to manipulate you. If they begin to manipulate you or try to force you or try to make you feel bad because you told them no or you know, you're not moving in the direction that they want, that is a sign from the Lord that they are not, that you should not be sitting under them. That is a sign from the Lord that they have an impure heart and they're moving under the spirit of manipulation and control. And that is witchcraft, right? You need to leave that ministry. And that could be a sign that God wants you to leave that place. Um, so your spiritual leaders also, they're not going to walk with you through the storms of life. They're not the ones that are, that's going to marry this person and spend the rest of their life with them. You are. You need to have a word from God about who you marry. You can't go off of anybody else's word. Your mother, your father, your sister, the person that you trust most. You can't just go off of their word. You need to have a word from the Lord and let what they say be confirmation. It could be the case that God shows them first, right? God could show someone else first and not show you yet. God could show someone else first that isn't even the person that you're going to marry and not show you and then later on, God can show you or you can go and pray and God can show you the same thing. But you need to make sure that God has shown you that. You need to make sure that you have assurance from the Lord about this. 
Um, like I said, they're not the one that's going to walk with you um, through this marriage. You are. So you have to be sure. You have to choose wisely. Choose wisely. Amen. So those are the five questions that I get asked often. Now, I do have a few tips, just some words of advice concerning this topic. Um, for those who follow me for a while, who um, follow me regularly, you know that I like to be very careful about these things um, because from my experience, a lot of people have a false word. They think it's God, but it's not. It's, a, it's another spirit. It's a familiar spirit. It's their desires. It's the enemy. So I'm very careful how I minister to this topic. And I'm very careful not to um, help people prop up their idol of marriage because many people have a marriage idolatry, a relationship idolatry, and they really just want to jump into it. And um, not to say that everyone, not to say that because you desire marriage, that it's an idol. No, there's nothing wrong with desiring marriage, um, but just make sure that you're not desiring it more than you desire God. And since I mentioned that, I would also recommend that you go and watch another video that I posted last year called Marriage Idolatry. And that one is very good. And I think it'll give you some insight and also some deliverance if you have um, marriage as an idol in your heart. So I have three quick um, tips, right? Number one is your story will not be like mine, okay? Your story will not be like mine. God doesn't have to show you who your spouse is in advance before it happens. Um, sometimes as we're walking life, as we are, you know, living for the Lord, he just allows us to walk into some things. You may not know in advance until that person is literally right in front of you. Um, so don't feel like your story has to be like mine. Don't feel like it has to happen in the same exact way. If there's someone else who has a story um, of marriage that you admire, do not try to replicate their story. Don't feel like if it doesn't happen the same exact way that it's not God. That is a lie from the enemy. Um, don't try to, like I said, don't try to replicate someone else's story. God is the best creator, right? He is the best creator there is, and he has he never runs out of ideas. And he has the best creative ways to unfold his will. He's the best storyteller, right? He's the very first storyteller, right? In the beginning was the word. Um, so God is not out of ideas. He's not out of beautiful love stories. He's not out of beautiful matchmaking stories. He knows how to connect you with the person that he has for you. So do not fret. Do not feel like it has to happen this way. Don't study. You know, get, get advice, get wisdom, get um counsel from other people's stories learn from other people's stories but don't study it to where you feel like if your if your journey doesn't happen this exact this exact way that it's not god what you should be replicating is the word of god what you should desire is for your story to honor the lord for your story to honor the word of god and the boundaries that God has given us in his word concerning relationships, like you shouldn't be sleeping with somebody that you're not married with, right? So replicate the word, right? Replicate the word of God. And it's good to be inspired by someone's story, but it doesn't have to happen the same way. Don't replicate it. And also the last one is to pray for your future union. This is something um, that had I knew more about the power of prayer, I probably would have done more. In my time, my process of getting to marriage, I did pray for it, but I didn't pray as much as I know to pray now. So pray for your future union. Um, pray for the purpose that God has ordained for it to be fulfilled. I believe that every couple, every marriage that God puts together is for a divine purpose on the earth, for the kingdom of God, right? To advance the kingdom of God. And there's something specific that God wants to use each of you to do in a certain group of people in a certain region at a certain time. And your marriage has purpose. Um, so begin to pray for the purpose of God to be fulfilled through it. Begin to, if you're not married yet, pray that, you know, that the both of you would submit to the process of God, that you would submit to the development of God in your singleness so that when you come together, you're ready, right? When you come together, you're where you need to be to move forward into marriage. And that when you come together, as you walk through years of being married together, having children, you know, doing life together, that you fulfill the calling that God has for the both of you on the earth and that God has for your marriage and for your family in general. Don't just, you know, be a sitting duck and just, you know, I'm just waiting around for my spouse. No, don't just sit around and wait out of the, like wait with purpose. Wait with intentionality. Wait while doing something significant like praying. Pray in advance for what it is the Lord has shown you. Even if you don't know who your spouse is, but you desire to be married or you know that God 
will have you to be married one day. Pray in advance for your marriage. Pray into it. Pray for every aspect of your marriage. Pray for your finances. Pray for your womb. Pray for your children. You know, pray for their children. Pray for your in-laws. You know, pray in advance. Pray for the houses that you're going to live in, for the atmosphere. Pray for the neighborhoods that you're going to go into, that God will cause you to be a light in those neighborhoods. Pray in advance. You know, be strategic in the prayer. Don't just sit with, you know, sit on your hands and just wait around. Wait with purpose. Wait intentionally. You know, there's power in prayer in advance. Amen. Amen. So that is today's um, message. That's today's video. These are the five um, questions that I get asked often, and I hope that it encouraged you. If you have more questions, feel free to put them in the comments, and I will try to get them as soon as I can. If I have enough questions, I might do another video to this. This is a topic where you can literally talk about this forever. Relationships, there's always something to talk about when it comes to relationships. So who knows, I may do more videos of frequently asked questions, and it may um, touch some of the questions that you all have. So I hope you were blessed by today's video. If you were, please like the video, share, and also subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you were encouraged, go ahead and leave a comment below. Or if you have a question, leave a comment below and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Also, you can follow me on social media. I have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find me on any of those platforms. I would love to connect with you. And also for the women, I encourage you and I invite you to join the Heart of Worship Ministry. This is a ministry that I started um, back in the end of 2019 for women. As you all know, Heart of Worship started as a blog and then um, God led me to start doing YouTube. And I knew that eventually it would become a ministry and that has now taken place and it's growing beautifully. And um, so I meet with a group of women all over the world on Zoom um, from the first, second, third, and fourth Thursday of every month. That's the first to the first to the fourth Thursday of every month at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard, Standard Time on Zoom. We have Bible study, we have prayer night, we have a monthly teaching that I do, um, and we have fellowship night where we just get to talk and ask questions and just encourage one another in the things of God. And I have seen a lot of growth in myself and in the other young ladies that come on. Um, so there's no age limit really. It's just for women. So I guess if you're uh, maybe 18, also some teenagers join us as well, um, and I know that they're also blessed by it, so feel free to come on. All the links for um, the Heart of Worship Ministry are down below in the description box. We also have a Facebook group, a private Facebook group, and you can join if you would like to. The link to that is also down below. So thank you for joining me today, and I hope that this video blessed you, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!